Hello, and welcome to a reading vlog. I hope you enjoyed my frothy coffee maker. Uh, I'm very excited about it, so it does have to feature prominently in this reading vlog. I made a latte with a couple pumps of vanilla, loving my frothy coffee maker. But this isn't a coffee vlog. So <laughs> if you've been anywhere on the bookish social medias lately, if you read any amount of fantasy, romance, or just like popular fiction at all, you will have seen this book, The Fourth Wing. It has been everywhere. It's by Rebecca Yaros. It has been selling out places. I have had very little interest in it, but everybody just keeps talking about this book. Mostly good, some of it not, and I bit the bullet. No, I did not go buy it, but weirdly, one of my library systems had an audiobook of it. So I have an audiobook of The Fourth Wing. I have an ebook of it as well. So we're basically going to be doing like a 24 to 48 hour reading vlog where I read this book and see if it's worth anybody reading. Is it worth the hype? So I have two days to myself in this house. I am going to listen to this, maybe read along with the ebook and see how I feel about it, I will stop in and give you guys updates. We have some errands to run, we have an unboxing to film, there's things I have to do with this time in between, but it's a almost 21 hour audiobook. I might be able to do it in a day. I definitely can do it in two. So I'll see you in updates and we're gonna find out if I like this book. And I have a frothy coffee maker to get me through. And that's the most important thing. chapter one but let's let's talk let's talk about the fact that we are launching right in with a shit ton of exposition which i don't hate because uh, you're getting the like the lay of the land but so far we know we have violet she's gonna be our mc she is not like all the other cadets she's super smart she was supposed to be a scribe but her mom's general and a bitch and is like no you're gonna be a warrior dragon rider thing okay she's got sister mira who seems very nice, but like tough. I like the sister. The sister's basically giving us all the exposition we need on like the lay of the land going into this world. Also, she's she's a little bit more saucy. She's had a couple sexual partners. So she's also giving her some tips and tricks, her being Violet, some tips and tricks on like who to bed and who not to bed. Because apparently it's a first year cadet. Don't you go for the second years. Because there's somebody there named Dean, Dane, something like that, that she knows he's the second year. She's like, don't you? I know you're excited to see him. Don't you do stuff with him? But then a couple of minutes later, she says to us, don't talk to Zayden. Zayden is going to kill you. Zayden, I feel like, is going to be your sexy, slightly villainous, morally gray, actually good love partner. So I already see our love triangle. Don't know how I feel about you setting this all up from the beginning, but we'll see how this goes. I was thinking, like, what the heck is going on in here and that, like, they have to be prepared for war? Because it sounds like she's starting some crazy test of strength to get into this dragon riding academy. She's got to, like, scale walls and not die before she even enters the school. And, like, why are they even doing this? Why do you need to ride dragons? I guess there's some sort of rebellion that has occurred. I don't know who they're fighting right now because it sounds like the rebellion is mostly squashed, but I'm sure it's not. I'm sure that's going to come up again. There's separatists or something and they have scars or markings on them. But sort of like dragon riders that are made by their dragon. Like, are they branding? I don't know. There's a whole lot happening in chapter one, which again, on the one hand, I'm like, thank you for setting up like a base for this story. But also, do you need to dump it in one chapter? It's gonna be a long 24 hours. That's, that's all I have to say. He's tall, with wind-blown black hair and dark brows. The line of his jaw is strong and covered by warm, tawny skin and dark stubble. 
And when he folds his arms across his torso, the muscles of, in his chest and arms ripple, moving in a way that makes me swallow. And his eyes. His eyes are the shade of gold-flecked onyx. The contrast is startling, jaw-dropping even. Everything about him is. His features are so harsh that they look carved, and yet they're astonishingly perfect like an artist worked a lifetime sculpting him. And at least a year of that was spent on his mouth. Even the, the diagonal scar that bisects his left eyebrow and marks the top corner of his cheek only makes him hotter. Flaming hot! He's a Cheeto! Scorching hot. Gets you into trouble and you like it level hot. That's, that's, that's got dashes through all of it. Suddenly, I can't remember exactly why Mira told me not to F around outside my year group. And this is our boy Zayden. I think I know what I'm in for now. It's not written well, okay? But you know what? Neither was the Mind F series, the Mind Fork series, but my, our girl ST Abby, I ended up liking it because it was a fun ride. I'm hoping for that here. We have not made it out of chapter one. I didn't stop doing updates. We cannot have a chapter by chapter update. But this could be the longest, longest 24 hour reading vlog I had ever done. All right, I'm gonna make a chunk in this hopefully before I give you another update, but we'll see if I fail at that because this just might be the kind of book where I have a lot of thoughts. There's gonna be so many updates. We're in chapter two. We've learned that Zayden is part of his family's part of uh, the the rebel group and he is a cadet as like he's he was conscripted as punishment because his parents like rebelled or whatever and i guess like his dad killed violet's brother and i think like violet's mom killed zayden's dad or something like that i don't know i highlighted it they each killed somebody they have beef that's the point. But then there's this like crazy Jack kid. So she's finally like going up the the para press whatever. She's going up the mountain or whatever to get into the dragon school where she can then be like eaten by dragons or whatever. And there's this kid Jack who's just like torturing her and like threatening to murder her on the way in because he just doesn't believe she should be there. What a twat. She she basically like stabs him next to his testicles and is like stop it. So like I kind of like her right now, but I also kind of find her tedious because she was supposed to be a scribe, so she basically knows all of the rules of everything. She knows all of the history of like this world. She's been like repeating it to herself up this mountain, so we've just got a whole bunch more exposition about the world itself, which I frankly didn't really pay that much attention to because I was bored because I cannot get that much info dumping. Who are you, Brandon Sanders? And no, you're not. Stop it. Get some help. But I'm happy she like stabbed the guy. But now she's like, this is why, you know, these let me tell you all the rules about why what you're doing is inappropriate if you don't follow the rules. And like she's such a square and it's so boring. But, you know, she's nice. She traded a boot with some girl so that they both wouldn't fall down the mountain. So each of them at least had one boot that had some traction. But she does seem to get a level up because her sister basically prepares her for all of this. Whereas everybody else kind of shows up and at least one of the people she's met so far has died. But the info dumping, the info dumping in this is horrendous. It has to stop at some point, right? Like, at some point, do you give me enough background? early on. Are you front loading this? Please front load this so I can just enjoy the story as we go along. But like the info dumping is rough. <laughs> More updates because we just keep having updates. Uh, so she has some sort of like chronic condition with her joints and stuff. Being like Ellers Danlos, but I don't know if it's specifically stated in any way, but that's what it sort of reads like to me on the page. So she runs into her sexy childhood friend, Dane, when she gets there. And he's like, what are you doing here? And she's like, you're so hot. And then he like sneaks her into his room and like she wraps up her knee, boopity boo. And then he tries to bring her back to the scribe college. And she's like, what are you doing? I'm not a scribe. I'm a rider, dragon lady, cadet. And he's like, but no. So I feel like what's going to happen is that we're going to have Dane, who's like, 
I love you, but I have to protect you because you're broken and you can't do for yourself. And then we're going to have Xander or Zayden or whatever his name is. And he's going to be like, I love you and you are a powerful bitch and let's burn down the world together. And she's going to realize that, so Dane, she, she had a childhood crush on him. Dane just sees her as a broken toy and Zayden sees her as the powerful woman she really is. Did I just, is this the whole book? Is this the whole book? Right now. I do like that there's dragons, so the dragons seem pretty badass. I'm, ho I'm hoping once we get to the dragons, I'll be less like, this book is so cliche. I feel like I'm being really rough on this book. Like, everyone just keeps talking about it. I don't hate it, though. Like, it definitely is very, like, readable. Like, I want to keep going. There's that. It's just so predictable, but it doesn't mean anything, because, like, I like romance novels, and they're very predictable, too. I hope these dragons are as bad as they're making them out. They keep making it sound like your dragon might like eat you and you have to like fight to get a dragon and it's like dark and dangerous and violent. And like, I hope that delivers. Okay, I finished my errands. Uh, i am decided to knit something. We are, where are we? Where are we even in this? I've just been, I've just been listening along, enjoying my life. Chapter nine, we're in chapter nine. Okay, so loving the school aspect. Totally here for it. One of my favorite things is like a magical school or like a fighting school or like a combat school, whatever. I, I, totally here for the school aspect of it. I love that they keep having to spar and fight against each other. I like how Violet is smart and uh, understands that she is not like physically like intimidating or able to one up the other people, but she can use her brains. I totally love our Zayden character. They just sparred. That was, that was fun. That was good. I don't know how smexy this gets because it reads like a little young. Maybe it's new adult. It's not definitely not young adult, but it's not like adult adult. So it's definitely like new adult. So I don't know how smexy it's going to get, but they're going to smexy time. But then she's still doing this stuff with Dean. 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 We don't like him. Whoever he is, we don't like him. He is, he doesn't understand her. But you know what this does? Do you know what this book does that is kind of annoying is it is going too hard on the like, she's so tiny, but he's just so big thing. It's just going way too hard on that. And like, I get it. I get that she is small, fragile. She has like whatever thing that is like chronically ill with her, like her chronic illness, which I love that rep. But, like, do we need to, like, continuously remind ourselves that, like, she's just a tiny little thing and he's just such a big boy. Like, do we need to do that? Do we? Also, this Jack kid that wants to kill her is, like, a serious psychopath and needs to be disposed of. Like, he is, he is disgusting. Still loving the dragons. Love me dragons. Give me more dragons. I need more dragon books. So if people have more dragon books, tell me in the comments. I'm loving it. If you haven't figured out, there's going to be spoilers. I'm trying not to spoil like everything, but yeah. So there's like attacks happening in like the borders with their neighbors whose name I can't remember. There's fewer and fewer dragons. There's the same number of writers every year. Dragons choose writers. So that means there's a bunch of people that have not been chosen and they're still hanging around. Like they've been left back in high school waiting to be chosen for a dragon. There is a lot of animosity for Violet here because um, a lot of the cadets are were conscripted to go because as like punishment because their parents were like 
they were the traitor's parents, the ones who rebelled or whatever. So their kids, their punishment was like the kid, the parents got murdered and like the kids had to be conscripted into the army essentially, which is not a very nice punishment. But anyway, but Violet doesn't really have anything to do with that, but she's kind of getting punished for the sins of her mother. It's interesting. There's all these rules about these kids whose parents had rebelled. I can't remember what they're called. And like how many of them can congregate, I guess, because they just don't want them to like rebel again. It's there's there's political machinations happening, my friends. Are they doing this little thing here? Isn't that cute? I already have one, but I figured I can make this. I need to get polystyrene balls, but I don't have anything this sunshiny. So I just have this is what I found in the garage. So we're gonna do that. And this is where we are. Oh, and there are hornets all over my front porch like my stoop to get out my door so we really are doing this today we will probably read all of this today because i'm not going outside until it's dark again because i have this i've had two weeks where that with multiple hornet stings and i think if i have another one i'm gonna die and i don't even think i'm being dramatic it's been really bad i am basically barricaded in this house with the dogs because of bees i don't want that Okay, now that Goldie is here, I am totally invested in this. I am, I'm invested. I, I, I'm just knitting and listening and knitting and listening. And if that Jack boy hurts Goldie, I'm going to be mad. Just a sucker for some dragons. Just a sucker for some dragons. Okay. We had to take a little break because <laughs> the dogs needed to go out. So I braved the bees. There is one just chilling on my front stoop. He's just a hum little bumblebee, so I'm not as worried about him. But, like, I don't know why he wants to be there so badly. Because he left. And then he came. I'm so terrified. You don't understand how scared I am of these bees. Like, if I go outside and I see one, then every time I go outside and come back in, after that, I literally, like, like strip and search myself for bees. Because I got stung in my house because they came into my house. Anyway, I left at a very important part in this book. Psychopath Jack is trying to do something to Goldie. He wants to murder Goldie because she's the weakest link. And like, I'm not okay with this. I'm already invested in this little dragon. Also, by the way, I left the knitting on the couch while I took Kenny out. And when I opened the door, Mercy was standing with this in her mouth. And just like a string of knitting you know it was connected to my knitting so it was just just straying all over the living room because she 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 brought this to me i guess anyway back to goldie back to goldie i love this dragon and i'm invested now and zayden is a dumb name but zayden he's in this clearing too being all broody and potentially hot. Now I feel like we could turn up a couple notches on Zayden and make him make him broodier and sexier and we could get some more chemistry and tension, but you know, it's a new adult. Maybe I'm just too old. And Mercy, thank you for Mercy. Just gonna scoot in right there. I guess she felt left out. I don't know who's bringing the bees in. I don't know if the bees are bringing themselves in, if the bees are coming in on our clothes, if the bees are coming in on the dog, or what. But anyway, we're, 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 we're done with the bees. Nobody's going out for a little bit. I'm getting back to knitting my little book stand. That's cute though, isn't it cute? I can put my Kindle on it and read. And we're gonna find out what happened to Goldie. I'm I'm stalling because like I I know nothing bad's gonna happen because I assume that's why the book is gold, is because this becomes her dragon, and the two small meek dragons end up being very important because of their cunning and stuff like that. I don't know how I feel about all of this. Like she's just so tiny and weak. Like I got it. She's tiny and weak, but you know what she is? She's smart. So. <sighs> I wonder if there's Smexy time in this. Is there Smexy time? Big Daddy Dragon's here. I think I'm getting it. I think I understand why people like this. I think I do. The Daddy of all dragons. Yeah. 
So the voice for the big daddy dragon is weird. Leave anything unattended in this place. Coffee break. Frothy coffee time. It's frothy coffee time. Also, screw Dane. Screw Dane. We hate Dane. Team Dayton. What a fucking terrible name. She kisses Dane. Not so great. Uh, but I'm liking that. She's messing with the whole, like, faded mate thing. This is, like, close proximity faded mate. Like, I kind of like, like it. I kind of like what we're doing here. But, like, Rihanna B is really young. So, like, it's just, it's just all very... I'm confused about how old... I mean, I know how old everybody's supposed to be because they're, like, 20. But, like, I'm confused by, like, how old this book is written for. Is this new adult? Is this new adult? Is that why it's confusing me? Because it's like a little bit old, a little bit young. Because even though Rihanna's like, Rihanna's going off and having all these little trysts throughout the book so far, like, she still sounds very young. Like, she talks very young. Rihanna's the side character. She's, she's one of her friends. Because, yeah. I do appreciate that Violet isn't, like, totally useless. Sure, she's like, just a little girl. But she also is super smart and like cunning and can do things on her own despite other things that might be handicapping her. She's just very clever, so she finds ways to do things that she might not have the brawn for. I'm going to finish my coffee and stop this update and get back to what I will. Also, I am like, I'm going through this book. I am trudging through it really fast. I will finish this today, most likely. Coffee and dragons. How better to spend a Friday. Sorry for all the sounds. Apparently everybody is drinking and licking and scratching. Children, we are, we are on chapter 23. For reference, there are 30 million chapters in this book. We have more background on like, I keep wanting to call him like Xander or Zane, but it's Zayden. Anyway, terribly named rebel boy. We have some more background on him. There seems to be like a lot of good stuff happening with the rebel people and the non-rebel people seem to have like I don't know question marks question marks your question markable people we finally had some like near sexy time stuff going on because apparently when you can channel the feelings and emotions of dragons and your dragons are mated and your dragons are mating it makes you horny af and like that was interesting I was hoping this was a standalone, but is this not a standalone? Is this a series? Because I don't know how you're getting through everything you need to get through. Because she has built a world with lots of pieces and uh, politics and there's magic and gods. And it's not like the best made world building, but like it does, there are things. Is this not, is this a series? Is this a series? Because there's no way that you're answering all the questions and explaining all of this. Cause like we still don't know why stuff's happening in these like mountainous border towns uh why are the rebel people probably pretty good like what's wrong with with violet's mother i'm sure her mother's terrible like what's wrong with her she doesn't sound great 
Uh, how do we get rid of Dane? Can like he just like fall off a dragon? He's pretty terrible. Like he's really Dane's pretty bad. But I would just like them to bang already. We're past the halfway point. Can we bang? Can we biggity bang? I'm gonna finish chapter 23. Wherever I finish is where I finish with this for the moment. And then I'm gonna take a little break for my ear holes, for the charging, for just the general ness of life. I might put comfy pants on because I'm done having jeans on. But I'm, I'm making some progress because it's come a foot long. Making progress, making progress, making progress. Uh, I posted about this on Instagram that I was doing this 24 hour readathon, and most people are like, this is good. And then occasionally I get something that's like, it's not worth all the buzz. So this is interesting. It's, it's interesting. I have thoughts that I'm going to hold off on saying like more like overarching thoughts about the book that I'm going to hold off until the end until I have like a final solidified feeling. But yeah, I, I have some thoughts about this. Come here, girly. Let's give an update. We're at chapter 28. Oh my God. We have like 10 chapters left. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. We're, we're cruising. I'm loving all this reaching. I love the shadow magic. I need more books with shadow magic. This is what I need as to get his book in Avatar. I just need, I need him to get his book. I need more sexy, morally gray, shadow wielding goodness in my life. Till then, I'm going to get back to this. It's very action packed. I'm enjoying that part. I wish it was like a little bit schmexier, a little spicier. Like it's like one chili. Young me. Rude! Rude motorcycle. It's like one chili. Young me would have found this a very fun. Old lady me needs more spice. But shadows, I do like shadow magic. I need more romanticy that has like Sexy, morally gray, sort of villainous people, like, like love interests with shadow play. That's what I need. So if anybody knows of that book or those books, that genre trope, whatever you want to call it, I, I would like that. That I would like. I put some wine in to chill too, because we're going to end this with a little wine. I thought she would sit up. And do this with me, but she's too lazy. She's too lazy. Hi. I I had I had to stop for some wine. Hemi's eating. Ignore the sound of dogs eating. Um, we have officially reached two chilies. Two chilies. And we're almost done. I think I'm like 90% of the way through. We're almost done. It's smexy. Er. And uh And it's most definitely a series. I don't hate it. But you know what? After all of that good, sweet lemon, I felt like I needed some wine. So I'm going to have a couple more sips of this beautiful Chardonnay. And then I'm going to get back into it. Because I left them up to something. Uh, because the dogs have really bad timing for wanting to go out. Mommy's in the middle of a smutty scene. Please stop needing things. <laughs> Cheers. Bless you. All right. If... If you could, like, talk in the mind of your sweet, sweet lover, and you didn't have to talk out loud, would all of your smexy talk be internal, like, mind di dialogue or external voice dialogue or mix? Just a question.
So of course we have reached that moment in our little romanticy where our lovers no longer trust each other. Violet is about to find out that what, why can't I remember this guy's name? Zayden. Call Z, I, I, he's just gonna be Xander because Zayden's such a dumb name. Xander has secrets that she really doesn't know about. And I'm guessing that what's gonna happen is that the enemy that she thinks is the enemy is not 100% the enemy and that perhaps like everybody she thought was, you know, the, the good guy is really the bad guy and there's more to the world than she ever thought there was and that's book two. Basically, this book is incredibly predictable, but also enjoyable. More enough, more collected thoughts at the end of this, but right now, that's, that's basically how I feel. And if my old ass dog wants to drink while I make this update, he gets to drink while I make this update because he's 400 years old. Emmy, how old are you? Are you 400 years old? Come here. How old are you, old man? Are you very old? Are you a very old doggo? If you want to do things, do you get to do them? Yes. If the old man wants to drink, the old man gets to drink. If the old man wants me to sit here and snuggle him, I will sit here and snuggle him while I read and do this video vlog. This reading vlog. Right, old man? It's not the best camera angles. I'm not going to lie. They can't see your beautiful face. Yes, they can kind of see your beautiful face. Your beautiful old man face with your old man little stained there. I'm going to get back to the ending of the fourth wing where Violet's going to be portrayed by Xander. That's not his name, but Zayden's stupid. I mean, do you think Zayden's a dumb name? Yeah, it's a very dumb name. It's a very, very, very dumb name. Ah, and I will be back tomorrow probably with final thoughts. Okay, I know I said I'd give you updates tomorrow, but oh boy, I have like three chapters left and Dean is a dick. That's all I have to say. That's my update. Dean's a freaking dick. He's a dick. I may have had a bit of wine. He's a dick. Dick. I hope you guys actually enjoy these reading vlogs. I haven't done one in a while. It's fun. I forgot how fun it is to just do updates. So, yeah. Dean's a dick. I'm going to need the next book now. And I hope that Dean gets like, you know? Can you, Dean? That'd be great. All right, the old man wants to go out. He's freaking out because he needs to go for a walk. You can hear him in the background. I just finished. We got a nice little twist. We got a nice little twist at the end, Hemi. We'll talk tomorrow. Everybody's in an uproar, but nice little twisty twist of the predictableness, but also nice little twisty twist, which was kind of predictable, but also fun. I got thoughts. All right. That's it. Fourth wing done. Okay, it is the next day. Let's talk about my thoughts on the fourth wing. I think you can see that there was quite the progression in reading this from uh, apprehension to enjoyment. And I think that kind of speaks to how this book feels while you're reading it. Is it well written? No, not particularly. The smexy scenes are quite good. There is a decent amount of world building that's kind of on par with other romanticy books. It's it's fine. Like it's definitely middle of the road fine. It's not uh, earth shattering writing. It's not doing anything revolutionary. It is highly enjoyable. I clearly enjoyed myself. I was wrapped up in the plot and the story and I was having a good time. I shipped my people that I wanted to ship. I was happy when they had, you know, explosive smexy time. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a good time. I really liked the dragons. I'm a sucker for a dragon. I'm not gonna lie, especially when there's like dragon riders and you can communicate with your dragons. Uh, I loved a lot of the more magical elements and the way that Rebecca Yaros tried to create a decently complex fantasy world. I do think it is very cliche. I do think that it's very predictable. And that's not always a bad thing. Sometimes you enjoy predictable books because you you want what is so predictable about it, right? Like you want that like feel good 
uh, romance feeling. You want whatever it is, that thing that you're expecting, you want it to happen, you want to get that. So I don't mind that this was predictable. I'm glad that she stops all this just info dumping. It was very info dump heavy in the beginning. And then we kind of got into plot and you got less and less of that heavy info dumping as you went along. Of course, there were moments where you had to have this, where you had classes and professors and other side characters dumping information so that you could understand the story, but it wasn't so condensed as it was in the beginning. So it, it didn't bother me as much. I'm definitely invested in this story and I would like to know what happens next. Allegedly book two comes out in November, so I will be reading that. I do think that they are very pretty books, which is always a plus. Um, but I mean, I, is it worth the hype? Is it worth the fact that it's sold out in a lot of places? Um, that on Amazon, I think it said that it takes like a month or two, like one or two months to even get a copy from Jeff Bezos. So I, is it worth that amount of hype? I don't think so. I think it does a lot of things we've seen before. I think there's a lot of things particularly in like a Sarah J Mass series that we're seeing in here. There's pieces pulled from a lot of other books and just like the general bucket pot pool of romanticy tropes, plot lines, and whatnots. It's pulling a lot of things from there. So there's really nothing revolutionary about it. So I don't quite understand, even after reading it, why this is such a sensation. Uh, as opposed to other books, which are also good and are very enjoyable and I get wrapped up in it and all of that. I don't quite get why the buzz for this is so strong, but I will say it was a fun read. It's action-packed. I do love a guy who has shadow magic. I don't know why that's a thing for me, but it's a thing for me. It's like hockey players, shadow magic. I don't know. I need a therapist. I enjoyed it. I think it's like a good three and a half, four stars. I think right after I would give it four stars. I think in a couple days I would make it like three and a half. But I really did enjoy myself. It was a good way to spend a day as books go for doing uh, like a marathon read and reading vlog. This was great. This was a good pick. This was not torturous in any way. I think if you can grab a copy from your library and you want to just spend a nice time by the pool or on vacation or I don't know sitting on your porch and you just want to pass some time I think it'll it'll it's fine if you like romanticy I think it's a fine book but I do not understand why it is like sold out everywhere because I don't think it's that revolutionary but anyway I hope you enjoyed this ride if you want me to do any more reading vlogs of anything in particular, you can always let me know in the comments. I would be happy to oblige. Otherwise, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video, whatever it may be, because it's my channel and I can do whatever I want. Bye. So just sit with me, talking to the night into the morning, building cat mystery. I don't think I ever want to go come closer next to me, trying to find another